We welcome in Petros Papadakis, oh. who's going to call the game for FS1 tomorrow night, Texas Tech at BYU. Petros, it's always a good day, an especially good day when it's a Friday and you're on the show. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, man. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm looking forward. I heard there's going to be knife dancers yep. at, at, at some point in the game. And uh, so we're looking, I think, uh, Marie Osmond singing the anthem. So we got a lot of great things going on. Let's go. And uh, looking forward to see uh, if either of these teams can bounce back. I, I had Texas Tech last week, and they got knocked around pretty good by Kansas State, as you guys know. Yeah, uh, we have bacon on the uh, cougar tail maple bar as well. So I don't know if we can get that one out to L.A. for you, but uh, we'll do our best. Okay, yeah, this is an interesting spot because we were just talking about sort of the desperation level of both these teams. Tech needs a win to probably feel comfortable about the possibility of making a bowl game. Meanwhile, BYU is going to Texas next week, has a tough November. Feels like BYU needs this game as well, or they might go on a little bit of a skid. The stakes are high, it feels like, in this one. Yeah, and I, I know that BYU, I, I just watched the TCU game, and I know how that can happen. I, it, you know, I, I played against TCU in the Francione days in the Sun Bowl. And, you know, back then they were, I, I don't know what conference they were in. They weren't in the Big 12. And it looked like uh, it looked like their film was taken on a pogo stick. <laughs> and we had no idea, you know, we... And we came out, and they punched us in the face, and we kept hearing that stupid horn, oh. the, the frog horn, uh, you know, they kept scoring, uh, you know, I, I, and it's draining, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I know BYU's not good enough uh, to come out on the road and get jumped on like that and, and then kind of try to summon it back, he, even though they were kind of able to, uh, against Arkansas. So uh, we'll see what happens. They'll be at home. They'll be comfortable. And, and Texas Tech is is really beat up. So it, it should be an interesting matchup. But, yeah, I think they both need it really bad. Yeah, for sure. And Texas Tech comes in as a three-point favorite. Again, you saw them last week, Petros, and you just watched BYU. Do you, do you throw out the TCU game when you're assessing BYU? Or is that – does BYU just need to embrace it – Maybe that is who they are, and that, that could happen again. Well, I mean, they stacked the box, and they basically dared a, a young quarterback with not a lot of experience who hadn't played that much to beat him and carve him up. And he did, you know. And uh, the pick six to start the game really set you back. And by the time the offense started getting going, like you see, uh, Roberts uh, running or there's the Martin, the young tailback. Uh, by that time, you know, the game kind of was already out of their hands and they were just trying to summon their confidence uh, for this week. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's confounding with the college football team. It's hard to keep these kids at the same level all the time, but I do feel as if uh, they're not good enough to be, the same team week in and week out, right? Like last year when they played against Boise, they kind of popped up and and it was almost like, wow, where's this team been? <laughs> you know, and then they kind of went on a couple little lulls. But uh, I, I think they learned a lot about themselves last week and we'll see how it shakes out moving forward. When you're throwing to Puka Nakua on a fade in the end zone for the with the game on the line, yeah, chances are you, you'll probably have a good result like BYU did that day. What can BYU summon in this one against the Texas Tech team that certainly uh, can run the ball with uh, Taj Brooks and uh, Cameron Valdez? These guys are good. Meanwhile, BYU hasn't been able to run the ball. Last in the country in yards per carry, second in yards per game. How many yards does BYU need to feel like it has a chance in this game running the ball? I mean, they just have to establish something offensively. Uh, whether it's running or throwing it, they, they've got to be more consistent. I like the young tailback. Uh, clearly, they're just not getting the push. And they're throwing it a lot more because Slovis is a comfortable guy throwing the ball. Obviously, the way the game started last week set you back. But this kid, Taj Brooks, the running back for Texas Tech, really is one of the best running backs in the country. Uh, they don't feed him the ball a whole bunch. Uh, they have an offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, who's one of those air raid guys. He was there with Mahomes. 
uh, as a graduate assistant, and, and he comes from that tree of uh, of Mike Leach guys. But Taj Brooks can really hurt you on the ground, and they like to get it to him, you know, really fast after a first down. They're very much a rhythm offense like TCU, and if BYU's defense can find ways to get them out of rhythm early, they can gain confidence. But Baron Morton, their quarterback, is a maybe – yeah, he did not play in the second half last week, and the other kid came out and threw three interceptions, Jake Strong. So they're, they're, they're going to be kind of one-dimensional on offense. If Morton plays, he's hurt, and if Strong plays, he's really inexperienced and and had a little bit of, uh, of the freshman blues in the second half last week. So uh, they, they – uh, you BYU's got to find a way to control the game offensively, yeah. whether that's establishing the run again or hurting them with a fullback like Kansas State did, or or getting uh, short passing going. They've got to control the ball unless they can get off the field early, and then they'll be in okay shape. Because uh, as we said, Texas Tech is pretty beat up on offense and on the defensive side of the ball. They're getting a lot of guys back after this week after a bye to play TCU, um, but they, they've got to travel and, and try their best in this one. Petros Papadakis of Fox Sports 1 is with us on BYU Sports Nation. You may have just answered the next question discussing the Texas Tech quarterbacks, but where do you feel like BYU has the biggest advantage, if there is an advantage at all, in this matchup tomorrow night? Uh, well, quarterback, <laughs> you know, I mean, they have a guy who's, who's a lot more experienced and, uh, and I mean, maybe on the edge, maybe they've established more guys uh, on the perimeter, uh, catching the ball. Certainly Isaac Rack. I mean, there's a lot of weapons on this BYU team and a lot of it sometimes, you know, throughout the first half of the season has felt a lot like that first game that I did against Sam Houston. It's just like, kind of herky-jerky you know it sort of feels like there's a lot of grinds in the transmission trying to get it going and maybe that's a product of modern college football and and bringing in transfers I don't know what Aiden Robbins status is uh, for this game uh, maybe they want to establish him and LJ a little bit more keep the guys fresher but uh, where do they have an advantage I I'd say you know right now they have an advantage in a lot of places just based on Texas Tech's health and and what they've kind of proven overall. But remember, Texas Tech, with with a healthy quarterback, a he healthy second-string quarterback, because their starter got hurt a few weeks back against West Virginia, Tyler Shuck. But with the kid Baron Morton, they went to Baylor and blew their doors off. And that's not an easy place to play. So, uh, you know, I think you're looking at two teams that kind of, are still grappling with their identity a little bit late in the year to be grappling with your identity. And I think the coaching staffs don't really know what they're going to get when these teams run out on the field. What do you make of the vampire Cougs? Let me give you a number here. Um, since 2020, what is it? BYU is 21 and 0 in games that kicked off or after sunset and 12 and 11 in games that occurred at least partially during daylight. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I have an answer. Uh, BYU, and I say this in the most respectful way, and it has nothing to do with who's there now. It's just always been the uh, it's always been the, the the mo. BYU is scrappy and mean. There's a little bit of bite in the way they play, and I think it's kind of prevalent throughout all the sports at the university. And I respect that they, but they have a little extra you know what, like a little punch to the ribs, you know, that that's how they play. And that's a lot less fun in the dark. It's scarier. So that's, that's my answer to it in the dark, that angry sharpened tooth of the uh, cougar is, is, uh, is, uh, draws more blood. Everything's scarier. Every, everything's scarier at nighttime. Oh, Cougars hunt at night. That's a fact. Hey, just so you know, uh, we like your Trojans this weekend. We Petros. love your Trojans. How, you, this how you feeling about USC bum, this bum, weekend? Bum, 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 bum. I, I mean, I, I, 
you know, USC has been taken to the wall by everybody, you know, uh, because of the lack of defense that they're playing. And then if the quarterback doesn't play well, you know, they're really in trouble. And the quarterback hasn't really played well in a few weeks, you know, not like we're used to seeing him play. Um, I know Arizona's improved, but they take it overtime and really dominate that game in the Coliseum. Colorado made it. You look stupid in the second half because you only call six run plays. You know, USC is not very good at situational football or complementary football. And Notre Dame proved that. I mean, they exposed him after four quarters after they got run off the field by Louisville. So I think USC is in trouble. I don't know who's going to play quarterback for BYU. They, I mean, they might get, you know, one of their kickers to do it. They for Utah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, excuse me. For Utah, they moved a safety over to play tailback. They've moved a linebacker to play – tight end i mean god knows but uh whenever they ask usc to play toe to toe and they punch him in the nose uh usc kind of lays down and curls up a lot like my dodgers <laughs> oh petros the one and only uh thanks for bringing some great laughs and fantastic football insights uh to this friday show we look forward to your call tomorrow night Hey, uh, what a pleasure it is to cover BYU football and the fan base and the coaching staff and wish you guys luck on Saturday. We'll try to have a good call and get a lot of Cosmo going. Let's go. Especially if there's no off. There's no offense. You got to lean on Cosmo. <laughs> Fire knives always and Cosmo it. are yeah. always the answer when the football is not good. Absolutely. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Thanks, Petros.